other type of infrastructure that they're building, of course, is hydrogen infrastructure, which I talk about a lot on here. But the fact that Honda is working with JAXA to talk about not only, and this is why, this is again why I really love hydrogen. It's not just the fact that it's, um, you can store it forever. It's energy dense. You can, you can you create it anywhere that you have water and, and electricity available to generate more of it. But um, yeah, you can actually create it easily on the moon. You can create it on Mars. You know, the whole, basically you can use it to fuel rockets, electricity. You can get water as a byproduct that you can drink. Um, and oxygen is a byproduct which you can breathe. So the idea of living on the moon in places like that, which I'm hoping starts happening seriously in my lifetime, is going to basically rely on the same sort of technology for uh, hydrogen fuel extraction and hydrogen fuel cell production and Honda, which is making hydrogen fueled cars, is working with the space agencies to start actually setting up infrastructure that they'll be able to put on the moon to be able to generate oxygen, water and electricity from the ice that's already on the moon. That's hella cool. And that's that's connected with the cars. And that's also energy, unlimited electricity that you can have that's that's carbon free, you know, or if you get it from green hydrogen. As of today, Japan still generates 32% of its electricity from coal. That actually number, that number was really, really low before they had to shut down all the nuclear power plants after the Fukushima accident. But of course, this is a disaster right now. Right now, Japan, nearly 70% uh, of electricity is from fossil fuels. Um, and, and nuclear, you know, made up 30 to 40% of that. And as terrible as the accident was we need it back at least until we have the ability to generate all the energy needs in other ways that don't increase carbon but um yeah hydrogen is the best thing for it and, and this is where at the moment you know because of government incentives they've been putting wind power and solar power all over the country but the problem is the way that power generation works particularly for renewables right now is that it's really hard to store really really big volumes of electricity even batteries are not that great and they don't scale that well and so these things are hooked up to the grid, but the, the grid will only take as much electricity as it needs in a given moment. And the problem with solar and wind is that, you know, it changes. Clouds come, winds change. So, you know, it, it means that um, excess generation is just like skipped and doesn't go into the grid at all and is just wasted. And, you know, uh, under generation, you need to complement with other sources to make sure you get the right balance load. And again, this is what I love about hydrogen is that you can actually, um, if you hook up hydrogen generation, you can use excess solar and wind generation to actually generate um, uh, hydrogen out of the water that's around sites like this, and you can store that on site and, and, and use that as electricity wherever it's needed. Um, so it's really, really cool. And the fact that in Australia, again, the Japanese government's just investing tons of money in this because any, although right now most hydrogen comes from hydrocarbons, it comes from coal and petrol and gas and that sort of stuff, um, it's the cheapest way to get it right now. They're called hydrocarbons. They're carbons combined with hydrogen, and it's basically what all of our cars currently run on, and you can actually extract the hydrogen from that. You have to capture the carbon, and make sure it doesn't get released into the air or anything like that, so it's messy and dirty, but it works with existing uh, petroleum infrastructure. But the Japanese government, of course, they don't, while they're investing in that, like they're okay to have that, just to have enough hydrogen to start up the hydrogen economy. Um, the Japanese government wants green hydrogen, hydrogen that's developed from uh, electrolysis with water. That, that's hydrogen taken out of water, because if you have that, then Japan doesn't need to import. It's not dependent on other countries for its energy resources anymore. It can do it all from within Japan. So it's investing like crazy in technologies to enable green hydrogen, which is hydrogen generated from renewable energy. And they're doing this in Australia right now, which has a lot of carbon-based hydro, you know, hydrocarbons as well. And they've figured out a, a way already to, to slash cost by two-thirds to extract it. If that's true you know again this is something which one they can do on a huge scale in australia from photovoltaics and from you know wind and so on but they'll also be able to do it in japan in time and that is just super cool like looking into the future and this is where the japanese government is also investing a ton of money not only on switching from fax machines to uh, you know digital um you know cloud and it based uh, technology they're, they're they're doing a lot of strategic investments in that field they're also doing that on things like this on green uh, environmental technology and I actually think the way that Japan, the Japanese government is doing this, and, and you know, America's kind of abandoned this. They talk about it, and we'll see under the current administration if it changes. But they haven't. They've kind of given up. Look at you know, you hear about the quality of infrastructure in America. You know, bridges falling apart, roads falling apart, uh, power lines that need replacing and that are vulnerable to solar flares and so on. You know. Um, America's Americans find it hard to pay taxes to 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 put to invest in infrastructure. Japan, you know, they actually do invest and they plan strategically around this, and I think it means that it's going to be really cool in Japan. So really excited about this sort of news, even though it means we're losing the skyline. Um, that Tesla is crazy. I w I would totally drive one of those.